Hello, this is Greg Gals from Green Ridge coming to you on 13 August 21. Time on deck is $21,4800 Central Daylight Time. Yes, 13th, uh, uh, Friday 13th. <laughs> Has the United States lost its strategic deterrence? Deterrence is what we have used to keep our enemies from attacking us throughout the history of the Cold War. Throughout the history of the Cold War, we had sufficient deterrence that we deterred the Soviet Union from attacking us. But today, the question has come up, the prospects have been raised that perhaps we've lost this deterrence. And this came up today, in fact, in Huntsville, Alabama, at the Space and Missile Defense Symposium that was held here in the city today. In fact, Huntsville, Alabama is now the biggest city in Alabama. As I, that was, I saw the announcement of that this very day, today. Wow, isn't that amazing? We used to, until at the beginning of this year, we were the third largest city. That's why I'm is growing in leaps and bounds. All right, that's an aside. So we're going to get back to this strategic deterrence topic. Uh, my friends, I bring you topics like this and have your eyes wide open and head on a swivel for things that may come at us so that you will know that you've got to prepare. And this is a time to prepare more than any other. So <clears throat> bear in mind, my friends, we live in perilous times. And today it's not just the Soviet Union, it's China. And China has been developing their systems extremely fast, extremely rapidly. And <clears throat> this is something that I've talked about. I've done many videos on this. And many of my guests have elaborated on this quite sufficiently, such as Dr. Peter Vincent Fry, who I've had on this channel, I think three times now. <laughs> so he brings you better guests than Green Gregs, right? So we're going to go into this. Let's talk about it. But before we do, I'm going to say, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and bang the notification bell and click all so you can get more videos on these topics so you'll know what you need to be aware of, what could be coming at. So you know that the reasons that we prepare are real, but don't be, don't be scared, be prepared. <laughs> and along that line, guys, I do have special things for you. In fact, I got a special deal right now, just real quick, $300 off a three-month supply a food that's 2,000 calories a day, and it lasts for 25 years. It's lightweight. It's easy to carry. And it's got these nice, easy-to-carry buckets with handles and pouches inside you can throw in your backpack. And so you can't beat that, my friends. This is freeze-dried. It's real food. It's not dehydrated goop. And, you know, that's an excellent price. And you get a month off for just 25% uh, off, which is about 70 some odd dollars, <laughs> 74 dollars some change, I think. So, guys, it's a great deal. Check it out. Go to prepwithgreg.com. Prepwithgreg.com is where you'll find that special. When you get there, you can click on the My Patriot Supply logo and go in and find all kind of other opportunities. I think we got gluten free and all kind of other stuff in there. Whatever you need, you're going to find it there. All right, let's get on with this. We're going to go into a share here. Ding, 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 ding. And I'm going to show you the article that was published. Yeah, and I've often attended that space missile uh, defense symposium. I didn't this week, though. This week, I did not attend it. In fact, I held my last power grid defense conference on the tail end of one of those, hoping we'd pick up some of the attendees, and that didn't pan out for us, unfortunately. So, and that's part of our, uh, you know, we lost a lot of money on the conference because of that. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but it was a different event, different topic. So, yeah, so here's what we're talking about. U.S. Admiral. Navy Admiral Charles A. Richard, he was talking about this today. Uh, he is, uh, so he, he was at this Huntsville conference today. Uh, he's the command of the U.S. Strategic Command, U.S. Strategic Command. So, you know, it's a good guy to have at this conference, right? The Space and Missile Defense Symposium. It's an annual event in Huntsville. I think we had it for a year or two. I think we kind of dropped off because of the bug. If they went back to it today, my friends. So what he said is this. He said, we are witnessing a strategic breakout by China. The explosive growth and modernization of its nuclear and conventional forces can only be what I describe as breathtaking. And frankly, that word breathtaking may not be enough. It's like beyond breathtaking. And so uh, he talked about how they're rapidly improving their strategic nuclear capability and capacity. And we talked about that. We talked about it in all the news missile silos that amateurs are finding out there. And in fact, here's the crazy thing is the Department of Defense is now asking 
Americans to continue scanning the, the photographs, the satellite photographs of China, because uh, they're, you know, the amateurs are discovering this stuff, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so isn't that amazing? So the, uh, these include intermediate range and uh, ballistic missiles, mobile ICBMs, submarine launch ballistic missiles, and also the ones with silos. So uh, yeah, they have uh, independently targetable reentry vehicles. And, and they're also doing the hypersonics. It's because these challenges to our current terrestrial and space-based sensor architecture may not be sufficient to detect and track the hypersonic missiles. He said our space-based sensors and missile detection architecture may not even be able to detect these things when they're launched. Hmm. He says Beijing is also developing uh, modern nuclear command and control capability and is modernizing its conventional forces such as ships, submarines, and aircraft. They have the largest Navy, a number of ships, that's true, and the third largest Air Force in the world. Not yet the largest in this placement, but they're heading there fast. And he also talked about threats from Russia. Now, he didn't, you know, we all know Russia still got more uh, nuclear warheads than anybody. He didn't even talk about that according to this article, but they focused on the things they're doing, which is just right below the threshold of warfare in terms of uh, the uh, ha hacking, cyber activities. Uh, of course, we also know they uh, Russia has, um, uh, you know, really been posturing on the border of Ukraine uh, off and on. Apparently, they're sending more stuff in that direction again. So, what he says here is uh, nuclear modernization is a Defense Department priority for deterrence. Well, we know that. That's for deterrence. Uh, he said the modernization includes not just the nuclear triad, but also investing in nuclear command and control systems that, uh, that protects against and control systems that protect against cyber attacks. Now I've said cyber attacks to take down our power grid. That's one of the worst things that could happen in this country. So these are cru crucial capabilities that need to be in there in some fashion. That's really hard to do with the power grid, by the way. Uh, it's kind of hard to hack, but it's also hard to protect for many reasons. Because, you know, like a stuck next to it. We got so many elements of the power grid. If somebody slips in with a thumbnail drive and sticks in a computer with a stuck next to virus, so you don't even have to be on the, the grid. That's what happened in Iran, by the way. So, which is also bo uh, mentioned boistering conventional forces. Conventional forces is a big part of deterrence, guys. You know, because the, the enemy may, th before they attack you, they may think, well, they won't use the nukes. We can redo this. We'll keep it all uh, low key and we'll whip them on the conventional side. And if we do it right, they won't right, go to nuclear. So we have to have enough conventional deterrence also that it kind of make them think it's not worth it. That's that's the bottom line here. It's just a uh, posturing, looking strong, peace through strength, as Ronald Reagan used to say. So and he says, better understand the nation the, the national security threats, the Department of Defense needs to, he say defense needs to harness America's greatest intellectual capabilities done in the past. And you know, out with the Rand Corporation. I know a couple of analysts that work with the Rand Corporation. In fact, one of them was in my policy committee for the National Space Society. I was chair of policy in the National Space Society for 10 years. And one of my, my most uh, valuable members was a member from the Rand Corporation. That's a think tank organization that's existed for decades in Washington, D.C. Her husband did similar work at a different big think tank. <clears throat> so he said the ongoing national defense, nuclear posture review and missile defense review are ideal means to address these threats and form decision makers and inform the department's path forward. Yeah, I bet my friend, uh, <laughs> my friend, uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Pry would probably be not absolutely enthusiastic about those reviews. He'd probably add, we need to add a few things to that. Industry as well needs to shore up the nation's defenses by delivering uh, needed technology and systems on time and at a reasonable cost. Yeah, well, that's true too. But we also need to have security to keep the, keep China from stealing everything as we develop it. Uh, you know, they're stealing stuff that's just from us, uh, just as fast as we develop it. We're stealing our technology. So there you go, friends. Uh, is our nuclear deterrence at, at risk? Let me stop this here. There's more to it than what he said. Because, you know, we've always geared up for Russia in the past. China's always been you know, down here. When Russia's been like in our face. Well, now China suddenly rised up, you know, and turned at us, and that's, and that's the dragon. And the bear is, you know, the bear is still there, but now the dragon is over here. 
So now we got a dragon and a bear. And the dragon is uh, rising in power very fast, very, very fast. And what we have to take into account is we might have to face them both at the same time. And then the deterrence really drops. See, locally, regionally, within the uh, access to Mal uh, area, the, the AAD, aerial, uh, see, access to Mal, shoot, anti-access aerial denial. That's what it is. Anti-access area denial, the AAAD, uh, A squared, A two, AD. That's what they call it. Uh, and, you know, China's approach to keep us out of the South China Sea, the East China Sea, away from Taiwan, and far off from their shores, so that we can fly into our sortie missions that we normally do to when we attack a country. They they, they got a standoff, uh, protected shield of sorts around them, not a real shield. But it's just what they can fire their missiles into. They believe they can just take out anything in that area. And you know, we we would probably be able to take a lot of those capacities out if we had a war, but it wouldn't be easy. And furthermore, you know, they, they, but here's what it was: like. China is really strong regionally. They got all their power focused right there around China right now. Where our power is distributed around the world and spread out. You know, peanut butter, uh, you know. Butter thin, thinner than peanut butter spreads. <laughs> We're spread out around the world and they're focused on that one area. So in that one area, they're pretty confident they would be dominant over us, but not strategically in the long run outside of that area at the moment. Now there's a goal to rise to power and have that, that capability by 2050 to, to be able to face us anywhere in the world, project power like that. But in conjunction with Russia, they probably have that strategic global uh, or maybe close to having that strategic global uh, ability right now. I know Russia's maybe is not that good, uh, but they have the nuclear forces. Russia's strong on the army ground. So, you know, I, I could talk uh, about, you know, how we'd face both countries at the same time in a war. And I think that's a topic I'll probably bring up in the future, how we would focus. Uh, it would be much like World War II, uh, how we would focus uh, Navy in the Pacific, and uh, that's how we deal with China and Army in Europe. With, just like we did with Germany, that's the strong suit of Russia is our army. So it probably looked a lot like that in that regard. If it stayed conventional and didn't go nuclear, of course, we have a lot worse weapons we had more too. And there's the cyber elements, there's bio warfare, there's just a lot of other things that can factor in, a lot of that stuff could come home here. And there's also the prospect of all kinds of sleeper cells. Today, we're so much more reliant on our power grid than we were even in the 40s. In the 40s, a lot of people are still living off grid. In fact, the whole neighborhood, the whole community where I live, off grid. <laughs> they weren't living off grid. They weren't preppers. That's just the way we live. <laughs> there was no electric power. It hadn't got there yet <laughs> until after World War II. So it's kind of funny. Now they think if they, uh, if they turn your power off, you should be condemned from your house, but you can't live without electric power. You know, that's why the government thinks if, if, if you lose your power, you need to be kicked out of your house. Uh, you know, my parents lived without electric power. <laughs> That's the way they grew up. My parents, well, that, you know, it's not 30 generations away. It's one for me, my parents. Um, anyway, <laughs> wasn't that they were off grid and producing power to an alternate means. No, they had no power. <laughs> so, but today we're so much more reliant on that. Uh, that's one of the biggest things I, I'm concerned about is loss of our power grid and conflict like that. Because uh, that was the first thing the enemy wants to take down. It's our Achilles heel in, it, in this nation. It's the one thing that can really, really, really do us under. And they all know it. So is our strategic deterrent gone? Does having a power grid not hardened take away our strategic deterrent? Yes, it does to a degree. That's why we need a power grid hardened. That's why we also need to be able to make sure that it's not worth it for these guys to take stuff. Uh, you know, we're unfortunately living in a world where we got a couple of actors who uh, would like to, you know, uh, Putin would like to rebuild the old Soviet Union, or at least parts of it. And China, oh, they just want to take a lot of stuff on how far they want to go. So the world, it seems like the world is what they want. So, wow. But it's been my point that I made on this channel many times that the demographics are against China in the long run because they're rapidly aging. And the younger generation has got this uh, laid down philosophy now. So it, with these two factors, 
China may run out of steam eventually in, in several years down the road, but they just can't pull this stuff off. If we can keep them from putting it off in the meantime, then maybe we won't have any conflict and all is fizzle away and nothing happens. That's my hope. Hey, Andrew, are you listening? <laughs> That's my hope. Yeah, I got a, friend, a subscriber on this channel. He's always uh, worried about everything when I talk about war, you know. So it could happen. We can have war. World War III could start right now. For all I know, the missiles are flying at this very moment, but I doubt it. <laughs> but <laughs> it could happen. It could happen in a snap. But hopefully we can keep that. That's been true most of my life. I grew up in a Cold War, you know. I was born in the Cold War. Some of you young guys that don't remember those days. And it was, it was very, very, you know, it, it's something to get on your mind sometimes. But guys, we survived it. Hopefully we can survive this too. Unfortunately, we have too many, we got more players today in the world We could bring about these kind of things. We gotta find ways to find peace and get along. But in the meantime, it means we gotta keep the tyrants and dictators from going out and, and grabbing too much. It also includes the ones, you know, our constitution uh, it commands us to, to and, and the oath to our constitution that most officers take to command us to defend our country from enemies foreign and domestic, that we have both. There are people that would take our freedoms from us here too. So tyranny, you know, tyranny is uh, something that, that comes in all shapes, forms and fashions from all over. <laughs> so we have to always be internally vigilant against it, you know, according to Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and those guys that were telling us that. We have to be eternally vigilant, to maintain our freedoms. So, you know, and, and you know, somebody asked uh, uh, Ben Franklin when he left the Constitution Convention, what had they accomplished? He says, "We create a republic if you can keep it." Oh, there you go. That's really it. So, you know, I think we can, but we really have to work it. We got to keep the politicians focused. You know, they seem to have lost a lot of focus of late. <laughs> so, that's to start reminding them. That's so all create things like the Freedom Restoration Foundation. Finally, the one thing that I always tell you guys, you too can do something to take the steam and the wind out of the sails uh, of uh, aggression that China seems to be feeling today. So buying their junk. Spend your, this is the best vote you've got. Every time you spend one of these, it's a vote. You can vote for them or against them. If you're voting for them, if you're sending these things over there, guess what that goes into? Tanks, ammunition, missiles, fuel, all that stuff that can fuel their aggression. So stop it. Cut it out. That's what we do. Things can be done on the national level, but there's things you can do too. <laughs> and that applies domestically and internationally. So let's hang in get here, guys. If we if we're really smart, diligent, and work hard, we can maintain our freedoms a long time without anything going bang bang maybe so hope cross your fingers and pray and work hard at it but prepare for the worst because there's a little bit. i've never seen such perilous times in my life it really looks like the 1930s or sometimes i think we're living in a bad b grade maybe all right my friends i beat this horse enough Thank you all for watching. Everyone have a great night. I got to get ready for the farmer's market tonight. Bye.